Hello, my name is Anvi Banotra. I secured an All India rank of 51 in the NEET 2022 and I'm currently pursuing my MBBS from Ames, Delhi. So I'm here today to tell you about the mock test and the analysis, what my strategy was while writing the mock tests, their importance and how I went about um, conducting my analysis. So first I'll start with why mock tests are that important. Okay. So the thing is that you start writing these tests very, very, very early on from like the first month of 11th. And um, as you keep writing them, your practice keeps increasing. But despite this, I've noticed a lot of students um, are slightly scared and even I used to be of writing a lot of tests. Now, the reason for this is because you often feel like you're underprepared or, you know, you're not confident enough. But one thing I can tell you as someone who has written neat, um, it's that even on the final day, you will never feel prepared enough. So it is very, very important for you to keep writing these tests because they build your confidence. The most important part about these tests is that they will be building your confidence. So essentially all the preparation that you do, it is worth nothing if you're not able to perform in, the, in those crucial three hours on the day of the final exam. And for that, it's very, very important to be able to keep yourself calm. And that's why the more number of tests you write, the more your confidence will increase. And that's why I would suggest writing as many tests as possible. Now, along with this, um, what happens is a lot of students can face a certain problem with managing their time. And a lot of times I've heard people come to me and they're like, you know, when we are not writing in the exam, we're not able to perform, able to perform. But when we're back um, home and we're solving the questions, we're able to do all of them. Now, that is mainly because you're unable to handle the pressure. So, as many mock tests as you can, you will write and you'll get a lot better at handling the pressure. You'll realize that no matter how difficult the paper is or how easy the paper is, the difficulty level will be same for all the students attempting it and soon enough you'll be able to handle the pressure as well. Now, along with this, NEET is a paper which in which you have to attempt 180 questions in three hours. That is like that's basically a lot of questions and you have to learn how to manage your time. So unless you're solving enough mock tests, you will not be able to figure out how to manage your time. And this is why um, I think it's absolutely crucial and essential for your preparation to be writing as many mock tests as possible. And again, I know that sometimes you do not feel prepared enough or sometimes, you know, your test might not even align with the um, this thing that with the syllabus that is going on in class. But as and when your syllabus gets over, what I had done was I had taken um, test series of like, I had taken several test series and um, I would attempt them along with the classes that would be going on. And because of that, even though I wasn't performing great in the uh, peripheral test series, because that was not aligning with the syllabus that we were learning, it was helping in a very accelerated revision. Because because I was like preparing slightly for the test series, what would happen is that more amount of my syllabus was getting covered for the revision. And um, so there are mock tests that you write in 11th. These happen small, small um, syllabus wise. Now, these are very important for your conceptual um, clarity and concept build, like getting everything crystal clear, because that is very, very important if you want to be able to score well. Now, this is through 11th. In the end of 12th, you start writing um, mock tests, which are full syllabus too. Right. But now if you want to be able to perform well in the paper, there is a particular way you will attempt the mock test. Every student has their own way and there's a different sort of method that suits everyone. Now, even the things that I might tell you, these are methods that were applicable to me, but it is on you as a student to be able to figure out what suits you the best. So especially during 11th, it's a very good time for experimenting with your strategy. Some people start the section with bio, some people started with physics and what works best for you, you will only understand if you've tried out all of it. So I would recommend during um, 11th or even the beginning of 12th to figure out different ways of, how, of what suits you the best. So how I went about my paper was I would start with bio, then chemistry, then um, physics. So now I will tell you about my paper wise strategy. How would I attempt the mock tests? So I will start with um, First, I would always start the paper with bio. Now, I will explain why I used to do this. Um, naturally, bio is something need students normally find very, very easy. Along with this, bio does not have anything to solve. 
so it's very um, straightforward you either know the answer or you don't or you have to think about it for some time but and along with that the weightage of bio is extremely extremely high so bio is essential if you want to be able to score well and um, so i would always start my paper with biology and how would i do that now um, this i will also pair up with your omr filling because neat is an offline exam so even filling the omr becomes very problematic for a lot of students so um, how i would start is i would start bio either from front or from back i would normally look at um, the questions so when you keep solving a lot of papers right for the questions are becoming very familiar that's why it's very important to solve as many mock tests as possible because these questions um, you would have done so many by the time your final need arise that you would just look at the question and you would know whether this is something that's good for you or it's easy um, or it's difficult so i would start with bio i would look at the question and normally i would start my paper from um, the front but if the first question was difficult then i wouldn't even look at the rest and i would directly flip, flip to the back and then i would go backwards so um, i would do the questions and i would go page wise now some students have a tendency of um, bubbling the omr at the end what i would suggest would be to bubble side by side now um, this again this might not work for everyone but um, often if you you leave the paper i mean you finish the paper and then you leave 15 minutes in the end but that time you're so stressed um, about finishing everything on time or you might have like a few questions left that when you are bubbling you might get something wrong you know some people bubble the wrong answer and because it's a it's a written test there's you cannot do anything to change that so what i used to do is i used to start bio i used to look at whatever questions were easy and i used to tick them first so first i used to tick easy questions I used to take the easy questions. Then um, on that page, I would check it again, and then I would bubble them. So I used to do one page, look at the questions, um, check them that then and there itself, and then I used to bubble page by page. So I would take the easy questions, and then I would bubble page by page. After that, I would finish bio, and then whatever difficult questions were left. Now in bio, what normally counts as a difficult question? It is the statement type. and now the assertion reasoning so the statement type and the assertion reasoning questions are the ones that you have to think for the most and you have to take the most amount of time for and sometimes even if they are easy because of the number of statements that they have given especially if you will see the need 2022 paper the number of statements that they had given itself reading them would take time even if you knew all of them so these questions i would always leave for the end so i would start with bio i would go page by page bubble um the easy ones then i would come back for the statement and the assertion reasoning and then i would do them and i would finish them so that would be my bio strategy after bio i would always move on to chemistry in chemistry pretty much the same thing all the inorganic and the organic questions that i was very sure about i would do those first then i would move on to um then i would move on to the physical questions page um finish one page check check it like um tick the answers check them there only bubble them as well so pretty much the um same thing now comes physics physics i did slightly differently um i was not very satisfied with myself unless i had done the entire paper and then checked it and my way of checking physics was normally doing the question again really quickly very roughly but doing the question again so in physics i would start from the beginning again always easy questions first it's very important for you to understand that you have to um before when you're doing the paper you have to start with gaining as many marks as you can so you have to start uh, you start with um, the easy questions in physics and then after that you try to lose as less as you can if i'm making sense so um you start with the easy questions do them then you move on to the hard ones finish them off and if there is a question or like a few questions that you're not able to solve at all you leave them for the very very end even after bubbling so like extremely hard questions you leave for the end so what i would do is easy questions then the moderate ones then i would check and then after that i would bubble physics and finally in the end after the bubbling of the entire paper is done i would move on to the very very hard questions if i had time left so this was my paper attempt attempting strategy now i'll come to analysis and this is something a lot of students do not give enough importance to analysis so why is analysis this important right because see you will write the paper 
and uh, there are there will be a lot of mistakes that you'll make and along with this there'll be some questions that you will think that you are confident about um, but you know you're guessing them and sometimes they come right and sometimes they're not so if you are writing the paper if you're not able to figure out what your mistakes are there is no next to no point of writing it right so that is where the analysis comes in so after the paper is done and sometimes this analysis can be very tedious especially you know when you are scoring around like um, 400 500 k range over there you made a nice amount of mistakes so the analysis can take a lot of time so i would you have but you still have to do it it is very very important um it can take like 3 4 hours but um, after the paper i would sit so physics ke analysis mein you would do the questions again um I'll, i would do more and more questions of the same type if i was getting them wrong or if it was a conceptual error i would try to get my concept solved i would get my doubts cleared so in the analysis doubt clearing is very very important after that chemistry analysis pretty much the same if it's physical chemistry you solve those you solve more questions if it's inorganic or organic you realize where you're lacking and you have to do the same type of questions again then moving on to biology i would see which question i got wrong open that page in the ncert study the page like few pages before few pages after and if it was a question that i was making mistakes in rep repeatedly i would write it on a post it and put it up on my wall same with chemistry especially inorganic anything that i had to remember and that i had to mug up and i would keep forgetting i would write it on a post it and it would go on my wall so i would keep um i would keep looking back to it as often as i could so this is why your analysis is very very important and again i know it can be very time consuming but you have to do it um along with this one more thing is often you look at the mistakes that you make um during the analysis but when you are writing the paper as i said there are a lot of questions that you are doubtful in so you end up guessing them and sometimes they are right and they don't show up on your analysis because they don't show up with the mistakes but those doubtful questions also when they come in the next exam you're still doubtful about them because you do not remember which answer you put was correct so even the doubtful questions you it's better if you circle them off in your paper when you're solving them and even if they're right at least this way you will know what the correct answer was and you'll be able to remember it and um, all the teachers will suggest you to make a log of the analysis that you're doing of all the mistakes that you're making somewhere record it now although i also had not made like a proper notebook per se but whatever points again as i said i would get wrong in physics uh, in bio and chemistry i would write them down on a post it they would go on my wall and whatever things i would get wrong in physics i would normally have a screenshot of those because um our, we were in the we were like preparing during covid so our tests were a lot of them were online so we used to like i used to like take a screenshot of whatever question i wasn't sure about and it would just be there on my laptop and i would um, come back to it whenever i thought that you know this it's time for me to do the question that i would be finding slightly hard and um one more very very important thing um now again because the pandemic is over you will be writing a lot more offline tests but for the students for the students who are writing online tests even i uh, majority of the tests that i wrote were online so this omr practice can you know like can you can have like there can be a like a lack of omr um, bubbling practice so what i used to do is i used to write online tests but i had gotten some um, sheets printed and while i was solving them i used to bubble them at home too and then i would check the key with them so this is it um this is so that you remember the mock tests are extremely important i know they seem daunting i know they seem scary but you have to write as many as possible this was my paper strategy if this works for you great if it doesn't you have time to experiment and figure out what works the best for you do not forget about the omr bubbling that is extremely important and at the end your analysis it has to be done no matter how many papers you write how tired you are analysis is very very important thank you